This video tutorial is from the Lightroom Image Processing Mastery Workshop, which is part of the SR Lounge Lightroom Workshop Collection. This workshop on DVD teaches everything from basic post-production techniques all the way through to advanced stylized post-production, Lightroom retouch, detail enhancing, and more. The workshop includes over 70 high-definition videos, totaling over 10 hours of uninterrupted education. Also included are the 50 raw image exercise files that we're going to be working through. Designed for Lightroom 4 and Lightroom 5 users, you can learn more or purchase this workshop from the SR Lounge store by clicking the link below in the description. Let's go ahead and get started with the video. It is time for the tone curve. In this video, we'll be going over the tone curve panel and the image I have selected is image number 49 from your exercise files. This is a shot of my son, Ethan. We are at the Getty Center in California. Uh, this is on a 5D Mark III. It was shot at 1 1600th of a second at F2.8 ISO 100 on a 2470 at 55 millimeters. Uh, this is the Mark II version of this lens, which is a, a great lens. If you guys are ever looking for a awesome, professional, yet great walk around lens, the 2470 Mark II is absolutely fabulous. It's a it's an awesome lens. It's kind of my go-to walk around lens now. And uh, I use a lot for professional shoots whereas before on the 2470 mark one I, I really didn't like that thing this one is awesome all right that's enough about lenses now let's talk about production what we're gonna be doing with this image is we're gonna be adjusting it via the tone curve now we talked many many times about how there are three ways to do something in Lightroom where we're gonna show you yet another way that we can adjust our overall tones using the tone curve and we'll explain how to use it a lot of people get confused or they might be intimidated with how a tone curve works but really once is explained a tone curve is quite simple all we have with the tone curve and you're going to notice that they're fairly similar is that if you look at this little graph right here you'll notice that these lines going up and down sorry don't look at the highlighted part look at this background line of this little histogram it's the exact same thing that we see up here in the histogram. It's another visual representation of our image. What we're seeing here though is just luminosity. So basically all we're seeing are the gray component of our tone curve. That is at least until we switch the colors, which we're gonna go over in just a minute. Just like we did with our histogram as well as our basic panel sliders right here, we're gonna adjust the overall tones in the image the exact same way. It's just done in a slightly different visual way, okay? So if I want to increase my shadows or if I want to basically brighten my shadows, well, what I'm gonna do is click right here and then pull up. Okay, now this is brightening the shadows in the image. If I wanna darken the shadows, I'm gonna drag it down and this is going to darken. What we're adjusting with the tone curve is luminosity. Okay, so up here you kind of drag to the left and right and dragging to the left decreases luminosity and highlights, dragging to the right increases. Down here it's the exact same except we're pulling it up to increase luminosity over here. We're pulling it down this way to decrease luminosity in our highlights. The separation in tones is slightly different. Okay, so if we look down here, it separates the regions a little bit different in the tone curve than it does up here in our basic panel. One thing that's important to remember is that the basic panel and the histogram, these two components are linked. So basically whatever adjustments I make up here in the histogram, if I pull my exposure up or down, these adjustments are made both in the histogram and in the basic panel. These are one and the same adjustments. However, the tone curve is not. The tone curve will not affect any of the basic panel adjustments that we made, and this makes it an incredibly powerful tool. So if I pull up right here in the middle, uh, in the middle kind of the highlights, you won't see anything adjusted up in our basic panel adjustments. The great part about this is that when we, when we make adjustments, we can basically have two ways of controlling the overall tone and look of our image. So we can do a lot of really cool artistic stuff with the tone curve that we really are not availed or we're not given with the basic panel adjustments. Now from here, I'm gonna reset my tone curve. I'm gonna right click and I'm just gonna go to reset all. Okay, so we have a couple different ways of adjusting the tone curve and one is by basically this region mode. And the way regions work are, is very similar to using our sliders up here. It basically separates it out into highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. And you can see which areas of the image are affected by those highlighted regions. I believe, and this is my speculation, that they didn't make this the exact same naming as the basic panel adjustments up here, just because they wanted to keep it uh, kind of different as far as, you know, you don't see exposure, you don't see highlights, and you don't see whites. Uh, well, you see highlights, you don't see uh, whites and blacks. Instead, we have lights, darks, highlights, and shadows. Really, it's the exact same thing with a different naming. I assume they did it just so people 
would not confuse the two adjustments. I don't know. I don't know why they kept two of them the same and not the other. I don't know. It makes no sense. Ask Adobe these things. But basically what we're having here is we can adjust these different regions just by pulling down on the slider, as you would see. So we can adjust those different components. We can also expand and contract regions by adjusting these little sliders here. So for example, if I want my highlights to control a larger piece of this upper range, I would just pull and drag to the left. And now my highlights basically are going to start at 65 or 66 and go all the way up to 100. So now as I adjust, you'll see that's where the highlights are adjusting is all the way to that point. So we can adjust by region, but that's not where the power in this tool really lies. The power in this tool lies with individual point curve adjustments, which we're going to show you in just a moment. Before we get there, let's go down to this point curve drop down right here. We have a couple different presets and it gives us basically three presets, one for medium contrast, where it's basically boosting a little bit of our highlights, dropping a little bit of the shadows. And once again, as we mentioned before, we know that contrast is achieved by basically brightening our whites and darkening our blacks. And that's exactly what this point curve is doing. We also have a strong contrast adjustment here. So those are basically the three presets that are loaded. The linear is the, uh, the default preset. We can also adjust our tone curve visually over the image by clicking on this little tone curve adjustment tool. We can bring it over anywhere in the image and you'll see what's being highlighted in the image. So as I bring it over his blue shirt, we can see that his shirt is currently falling into the dark region. Now if I click and I pull it up, I'm just basically left clicking and dragging the mouse up or down. I can control this region just by clicking basically visually in the image. Same thing if we go over like this point, this is a highlight. If I click and drag up or down, it's going to adjust the highlights and so forth. Let's go back to the right. I'm going to hit escape to uh, not use my adjustment tool anymore. I'm going to right click here and hit reset all. Now let's show you the power in the tone curve. The power in this tool is using this individual point editor. So we're going to click to edit the point curve. Now we're basically going to add points wherever we want. And when we make adjustments now, it will be independent within these specific regions. So I can sit here and click and I can add as many points as I want in the curve. Generally, we're not going to need more than three to four, but I can add as many as I want and I can adjust individual regions of the image to have whatever effect I want. Once again, I'm going to right click. I'm going to hit flatten curve just so we get back to normal. And let's go ahead and make an adjustment to this image using the tone curve. So what I'm going to do is I want to brighten kind of the skin tone region. I know basically the skin tones, uh, just from experience, the skin tones are going to be uh, kind of in the mid to upper range. So what I might do first is just adjust the overall exposure by clicking right in the middle of the curve and I'm just going to drag it up. So this is just adjusting overall exposure. Okay. You can see that it's bringing up our skin tones, it's bringing up our highlights, but it's kind of biased towards the center of this curve because it's pulling the center up further than both of these ends. Okay. So let's bring it up until our skin tones are about where I want it. And I'm just going to say it's right about here. Now what I want to do is bring my highlights down just a little bit because the highlights are just a little bit bright in the image. So I'm going to click up here and just pull down the highlights a little. And we're not going to go too far. What I'm going to do is go until I see basically kind of a too much flattening and then I, I want to stop there. Okay. So right about here is where I kind of like it. We flatten out the highlights just a little bit. I also want to increase some shadows. So I'm going to grab it down here and we're just going to add a little bit of shadows by darkening the uh, bottom portion of the image. So we're just darkening this part up. If I want to increase the brightness of my midtone shadows, I can click in between these two points and I can pull this up as well and we can increase mid-tone shadows. So let's check out the before and after with this simple point curve adjustment. Here's the before by hitting backslash. Here is the after. We've made all of our adjustments to our, our, our image basically with our basic panel adjustments here. We've boosted our exposure. We've added contrast and we did it without touching any of the basic panel adjustments. This is why this tone curve is so powerful is because it's independent of our basic panel. And so that way we can make additional adjustments on top of whatever basic adjustments we already have, which makes it wonderful for artistic effects. For example, let me show you how we would basically clip or get kind of a faded look to our image. It's actually extremely simple. All we would do to get a faded look to this image is simply click and drag up on this shadow point to basically clip any shadows that go below this little point. So what's happening is, Anything that drops below this point in the shadows is basically no longer revealing detail and it's going to be, uh, it's going to essentially go grayed out. As we pull this point up, it's going to basically affect more and more of the shadow range in the image. Now what I can do is I can right click here and I can delete this little control point uh, on this one and then we can simply click and drag up and you can see we're going to fade more and more of the image as we go up.
So if I want a really subtle fade to the image, I'm just gonna go and bring it right to about here. If we go too far to the left, by the way, it deletes a control point. So basically if we go to the right or to the left, it'll actually remove control points, which we don't wanna do. We wanna keep it just to the left, uh, just to uh, the inside right here. Okay, so let's bring it right there. And let's say I wanna bring down my mid-tone shadows a bit so I have a little bit more mid-tone contrast. Uh, right about, let's say there, I'm gonna bring down the high, uh, the exposure a tiny bit, and then I can do the same thing with my highlights. If I want anything beyond a certain point in the highlights to basically register as kind of like a bright grayish tone, so it's kind of a clip tone, I just pull down highlights. And once again, the further I go, the more effect it has. Now going down to this point does not look good as you can see over here in the, in the bokeh. What I would do is like bring it down just a tiny bit. Now, from here, we have a nice faded look to our image where here we can check out the before and the after. And let me just show you those two different versions real quick. So what we're gonna do is go and click and drag down and, uh, and let's just create that. Let's create our, our basic high contrast version of this image again. I'm just gonna bring up the curve. I'm gonna bring this point in. I'm gonna add a little bit of shadows here. We'll leave it right there. Let's create that snapshot by calling it 01 and we're just gonna say tone curve high contrast. Let's hit create. Now I'm gonna recreate that fade effect just by deleting this control point right here. We're gonna drag up on our shadows to kind of clip shadows anywhere below this point. We're also gonna pull down our mid-tone shadows or kind of just bring it back a little bit in this range. And then uh, that looks fine right there. We'll bring down the uh, highlight clipping a little bit too. So we kind of clip a little bit of this upper end range. So any highlights that are basically above this point are gonna be gone detail wise. They also start going to a gray basically. So the further we pull up on our shadows, the more gray we get in the blacks. The further we pull down our highlights, the more grays we're gonna get in the, uh, in the whites. So let's leave that right here as kind of this subtle fade look to the image and let's go and create a new snapshot. Zero two, we're gonna say tone curve, subtle fade. So now between these two, you can check out the tone curve and you can see exactly what's happening. All that's happening on the second version is we're pulling down basically, or we're pulling up basically the shadow point to make sure that any shadows below this point get clipped and they go kind of to this dark gray. Any whites above this point, they get blown or they lose their detail and they go to kind of a subtle uh, faded kind of gray looked as well. All right, so it doesn't get any more simple than that to create a, kind of a fade look. Next, let's select the second snapshot that we created and what we can do is we can have additional control over the tone curve within this edit point version of this by controlling individual color channels. So notice here that we have basically just our luminosity. So it's affecting all of our colors the exact same way, reds, greens, and blues. But we can switch the channel to reds, greens, or blues by choosing from this channel pull down. So if I go into my reds, now it reveals basically the red portion of our histogram right here. And whatever adjustments we're making now are only to the reds in the image. Same thing if I were to select greens or if I were to select blues. So we can create artistic looks in an image by adjusting each of these channels. For example, let's say that I want to kind of create a more faded look where my, uh, let's say my reds are kind of not as prominent. I'm going to go into my reds and I'm going to pull down the highlight reds just to kind of desaturate his skin a little bit. So we're pulling a little bit of the reds out of his skin. I'm going to raise it in the shadows a little bit so we're not affecting too much of the shadows. We're really more affecting the mid-tone reds. The more points that we're adding to this curve, the more control we have over these individual little regions of the curve. So two is fine for right now. Let's just use that for illustration purposes. In our greens, let's say that I want to uh, leave the shadows in kind of this mid-range alone. I'm going to click just to create a control point. And I'm going to click right here to create another point. I'm going to click up to kind of boost a little bit of the greens. So now we're getting a little bit more yellow tones up in the skin because we've reduced a little bit of the red, we've added a little bit of green. This gives us a slightly more yellow look. Let's go down to our blues now. And what I'm gonna do now in the blues is I'm gonna create a little bit of a kind of additional shadows or a, a little bit of blue in the shadows. So what I'm gonna do in the highlights is let's just click to create a point and not adjust that one, but we're gonna click down the shadows as well. We're gonna adjust this point up to kind of add those additional blues and I'm gonna subtract it out of the highlights. So we're kind of revealing more of the yellows in the highlights, which are the skin tone areas. Okay, so mid-tone highlights. All right, so we're pulling down in the, in the uh, top portion of the blues. So now we've basically modified the overall color in the image and kind of the toning by creating this sort of split tone look to our image where we have uh, reds kind of being dropped in the highlights, 
kept mainly the same in the midtone shadows. We've kept uh, greens in the midtone highlights a little bit boosted while it's about the same in the midtone shadows, and we've boosted the blues in the shadows while keeping it dropped a little bit in the midtone highlights. Let's create one more snapshot right here. We're gonna go zero three, tone curve, and we're gonna say plus uh, RGB. Okay, let's hit create. And now you can compare these. So here's that subtle fade where we basically just didn't modify any of the colors. Here's that version with that modification to colors. I would always recommend that you keep these modifications on the more subtle side because the more kind of powerful, the more further up you're dragging these points, the more unnatural an image is gonna look. But this is a great way that we can use the tone curve to basically simulate different types of film effects, different types of fades, different types of vintage looks, and so forth by modifying colors with the tone curves. Once again, the color modifications here are completely independent of the HSL panel, the hue, saturation, and luminance panel, which we'll go over in the next video. I know this was a lot to swallow with the tone curve, but don't worry. Once again, we're going to be going through tons of examples. We're going to solidify your understanding of how everything works. Hopefully at this point, you kind of understand the basics and how to modify this tone curve. Great job, everybody. Let's head on now to the next video.